How do you find your purpose? With four questions only. Hi, welcome back. I'm Mel and we're going to look at exactly that. How can you find and identify your purpose with four steps or four questions? Now, asking for the purpose and wondering what that is and trying to find it is possibly one of the most frequently asked questions that comes up in sessions that I have with people, but also that I know people ask all the time either themselves or with other people and trying to find guidance on whether it is in physical form through physical teachers or their non-physical guidance. But this question of what's my purpose here in the world, what am I supposed to do, what am I supposed to live is one of the first questions that come up when we realize we're not just here passively to to not create, when we realize we're here as creators. So let's dive into this. If you're looking and searching for your purpose in this life, and if you have maybe spent years already looking for it, searching, and not knowing where to go with this, maybe this video will help you. So you may have heard this before, that when we look for something within our path, we need to ask questions. And so this is the first thing I invite you to do. I want you to take a piece of paper and then you have two columns and you ask yourself the first question because this will already give you a hint at what your purpose is or could be. So the first question that you're going to write down and that you're going to ask yourself is, what is it that I love to do? And this does not have to do anything with a, making a living or with being purposeful or just in general, in your life. What is it that you're interested in? What is it that you love doing? What is it that you love spending your time on? What is it that you love occupying your mind with? What is it? Write that down and if it's more than one thing, usually it's more than one thing, but one will stand out, write what you love doing. Write that down, okay? And you can pause this video, you can do it right now or do it later on if you want. So in the second column, you write down, what am I really good at? And you may have heard these questions before and you may have even looked at answering them, but I want you to do this again, okay? So look at what am I really good at? And if there are certain things that you can't even think of, think of what other people tell you you're good at, what other people notice about you, what they comment about your, your skills, your abilities, maybe your character traits, Write that down. What am I really good at? And what is it I love doing? And then see where these two lists find points to join. Okay. Now, oftentimes this is where other teachings end. It's like, so find the cross point and then look at what you can do with this. But for some people, this doesn't work. You may have tried this and you may have said, well, this doesn't get me anywhere. And I'm going to give you an example now where it can be seen how if we stop here, it can leave you without finding a purpose, actually. So let's say somebody says, which is can be quite common at this day and age. Somebody says, I love, I absolutely love gaming, computer games. I love spending my time on the computer. I love spending my time playing computer games. And I look at what am I really good at? Well, I'm really good at computer games. <laughs> I have a lot of practice, so I'm really good at that. So this is what, what a skill of mine is or where my skills lie. And I absolutely love doing this. Where is my purpose in that? Like, this does not solve the question. It leaves you with, yes, I love doing this and I'm good at it. Now what? 
And this is only one example. There are other examples, but that's only one example. And if you have been down that road and you find yourself stuck with what you love doing and where your skills lie, what you're good at, then the next two questions are for you. So once you've analyzed this and you're in a similar situation as the gamer, but you're looking for a purpose, you want to have a meaningful life. The next question I want you to ask yourself is, what is it I am sharing or giving? So you stay with that area first that you have picked as this is what I love doing and this is where my skills lie. So you stay with that area and you look at, okay, what is it I'm giving in that? What are my gifts in that? What am I sharing with others? And if you come up with, well, I am spending a nice time online with others. I'm helping, helping them to have a fun time. Mm, um, I am, what are my gifts? Um, yeah, there might not be a lot that you feel like you're sharing, right? So write that down. If you find any, write that down. And then you also, that's the last one you look at, ask yourself the question, how am I serving with this? Okay, how am I serving? And if that answer stays kind of like, well, I'm not serving at all, really. You can also look at how does this activity serve me? And this will give you also an indication of maybe why you love it so much. And maybe it's not you love it so much because it's your purpose, but you love it so much because it serves you right now and it serves the little you. And in order to actually move past that and find your purpose, the big you, you need to identify what's going on with these. So what do I mean by that? When you see, I'm not really serving with this activity, anything or anyone, apart from maybe sharing some time together online, uh, I am looking at how does this serve me? Well, playing video games serves me in that I have something to do. It makes me feel good. It is exciting. It allows me to forget my loneliness, maybe because um, you may not have a family and while on Sundays everybody is out with their families and does stuff, you're sitting there and while you play video games, the time passes quicker, you have something to do, you may be able to forget your loneliness and not to feel it or not to feel it as deeply. So you see how this activity serves you, what it does for you, which can show you why you seemingly love it so much, because it, it helps you in some sense. And when you notice that, you can go deeper and say, right, so maybe I'm attached to this activity or to this topic also because it, it serves me in this way. And if there are deficits within me, I call them deficits now, but like a feeling of lack, a feeling of emptiness, a feeling of not being connected to people. So I fill all this with, for example, gaming. And like I said, this is only one example. You can look at what you have on your list. Then you can, you can understand yourself while, you, while you're so attached to this. And now what your purpose may transpire as being could well be something in the area of technology, in the area of IT, because you feel drawn to that. But if there's no answer to what gifts am I sharing in this and how am I serving or how can I serve through this, you may have to alter it. You, you don't necessarily have to move away from it completely, but you may have to alter it to find your gift and to find the service aspect. We're, we all have, and this life is meant to be enjoyed, we all have gifts and skills and biases towards certain things. And they're not there for no reason. They're there so we can discover them in ourselves and we can let them 
bloom, let them grow and share them with the world. There wouldn't be any point in having talents and having gifts and not using them, having passions and having areas of interests and excitement and not using them. It's a, a bit like in the Bible where it's like the, the different sons get different talents and the one who uses the talents and doesn't bury them and doesn't keep them to himself, uh, the one who uses them and actually makes more out of the talent, that's the one who gets praised. That's where we see, okay, if we share what we have, if we share what's within us, then actually we are purposeful and our life gets meaning. Our life becomes meaningful. And this is what most of you who would even watch a video like this, this is what you're looking for. Where is the meaning in my life? And meaning is something we find in sharing when we give something of ourself. So to recap, ask yourself those four questions. Number one, what is it I really love doing and spending my time on or dealing with? Number two, what is it I'm really good at? Like I said, even character traits, maybe you're very patient, maybe you're very enthusiastic, maybe you're very introverted, uh, maybe you're very extroverted. So what is it I'm good at? Um, and the next one then is, if you look at the overlaps, is, okay, so how can I share or am I sharing in this? Looking at the gift and on the other hand, how can I serve or how am I serving with this? And if I'm not serving yet, how could I possibly serve with this? And if those four cannot come together, you may discover that the area of your, your sharing with something you share and something you want to serve as, that could be something different than the first two, but you will also notice that what you have to share is something you are good at. Because if you're not, you're not inclined to actually sharing it with anyone. So if you are actually sharing your patience in some setting, you're good at patience, right? And this is also then how can I serve? Well, I can serve, for example, and this is now, it's not just always this out there. It is always also what's, what's within us that we share. For example, the gift of patience, the, the, the aspect of you that really is strong, your patience might be really, really good. So by your patience, sharing your patience, for example, as a kindergarten teacher or something, if you share your patience in that setting, you may say, well, I'm still a kindergarten teacher and yes, I'm there for the kids, it's, but it's not really what flies my kite. But for example, but I notice I'm a lot more patient than my colleagues and I notice how the kids respond to that and how this is needed in this area. You feel that you're applying your gift in that setting. You feel that there is something of purpose and of value within that and you follow that. You may actually change the area you work in, but the gift you share and the service you give could remain the same throughout your life. And this is what a lot of people notice also. They may change careers. They may even change the area of work. Some could be in, in a social setting, then it's in a medical setting, then it's in a technical setting. But what they have to share, their skills and their love and their strengths and their spirit of service is similar. It's very similar. And this is kind of the red thread that gets carried through. So try this and see if this brings you closer to you finding your purpose. I'm going to love you and leave you for today and we'll talk again next time if you want to.